there, it's Sarah again, bringing you another short practice. I'm going to do another core uh, workout tonight because my first one that I did uh, last month is going to be expiring soon. So um, I know there are some people that have been practicing this one frequently, so I wanted to give you something new. So we're going to start uh, with a little bit of a warm up, then we're going to come to hands and knees. <clears throat> Taking wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. And we're going to move with the breath here. So on an inhale, we're going to take the left leg back and the right leg forward. And then exhale back to all fours. Same thing, other side. We want to feel the front of our body pulling towards the back of the body here. And then let's find a lot of length through the spine. Flexing that back foot, reaching the fingertips long, and trying to keep the back relatively flat. Just find your own rhythm with your breath here. And then on this next one, let's hold up in that extended position. If this is too much for you, uh, with both the arm and the leg up, you can just either lift your leg or lift your arm. Keeping in mind that your core muscles here are keeping you stabilized in this balance. So we want to really be aware of the center of the body. Take some nice long inhales and exhales here. Just one more. And relax now. Let's do the other side. Same thing. We're going to hold for a few breaths. music's got to go. Let's take two more breaths where you're at while I fix this. <laughs> Sorry guys. This will just take a second. I just turn it off altogether. Okay, so coming back to um, hands and knees, we're going to scoot the seat back, lowering our tail towards the heels. If you can touch, that's great. Don't worry about it if your seat is up a little higher. And then we can either come to forearms or bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Feeling the spine nice and long here. Preparing for our first downward facing dog. I'm going to keep the fingers wide here take some of the weight off the wrists and then let's lift the belly bring the balls of the feet and the toes to the mat still pressing the hips back feeling length through the torso and then we're going to begin lifting again starting that motion with the strength of your core and then follow that by lifting the hips sinking the heels down gently moving the chest towards the thighs And relaxing your head here. And we're going to move right onto our first exercise. So we're going to come into a high plank position, which is basically the top of your push up. <clears throat> and then we're going to be doing some twists here. So we want to. Uh, practice mindfully tonight. Make sure we're listening to our bodies. 
If you need a break, we can always come back into child's pose. So we've got the balls of our feet and the toes on the mat and the palms on the mat. Now we're going to begin twisting and bringing one knee up towards the opposite elbow and we're just going to kind of keep moving. So right knee towards the left elbow and vice versa. Trying to keep your middle of your body fairly flat. We don't want to lift the hips too much or let the center of the body sag down towards the mat. I'm going to try to keep a straight line from our ankles to our shoulders. Couple more. Good. Let's take the knees down. Again, uh, pressing back to our child's pose, enjoying this rest while we have the opportunity. And take your arms behind you if that feels good. Okay, so now we're coming back up to our downward facing dog. <clears throat> if you want to here, we can pedal the feet. Feeling a little extra stretch in the back of the legs. And let's take our feet a little closer together so that the balls of our feet are almost touching. And we're going to float the right heel up. Bend the knee, bring your heel towards your seat, and then we're just going to gently open up through the hips and the belly. Just a real nice, easy stretch here. I don't want to force this. Let's take that right leg down and come up with the left leg. Same thing, bending the knee. Gentle twist. And then we'll come back and take the knees down again. And we're going to take our right hand to the center of the mat, right knee to the center of the mat. Bring the right foot off behind the back side of the mat, and then let's open your hips towards me. So the inside of the left foot is on the mat. We're going to take the left arm over our head. Lift the left leg. This is going to be our inhaling position. And we want to try to stay out of this right shoulder. In other words, try not to sink into the shoulder. We really want to press into the hand, feel the upper body lifting away from the mat. <clears throat> so this is our inhale. As we exhale, we're going to draw the knee forward and the elbow back at the same time and squeeze through that left side waist. Inhale, nice and long. Reach. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. Exhale, crunch. We've got three more on this side. Last one. Good. Let's come back to all four. Stretch back child's pose. Short little time up in our downward facing dog. Coming back down. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So we'll take the left hand down to the center of the mat, the left knee down, right under the hip. Right arm comes over the head, lifting the right leg, taking a long inhale here. Exhale, crunching.
moving with purpose, creating length with that inhale, really crunching on the exhale. Let's do three more. Last one. Good. Coming back to all fours first, and then again pressing back for child's pose. And coming up to your downward facing dog. So in downward facing dog, we want to try to keep our feet about hip bone width apart. Heels moving towards the mat, they don't have to touch. Keep in mind that if this is a really big stretch for the back of the legs and you're feeling a little tight, don't be afraid to keep those knees slightly bent. And then really tip the tail up towards the ceiling and try to feel a little more length through the back. One more breath. And then we're going to bend the knees a little bit so that we can come down onto our forearms from here. So then we're going to adjust our feet probably back a little bit to come into dolphin. So dolphin is similar to downward facing dog, but we've got the forearms down. Maybe a little bit wider stance. Big inhale here. And our exhale is going to take us to a forearm plank. So we're going to lower the hips. Keep the balls and toes of the feet on the mat. We're on the forearms, lifting the belly strong away from the floor. And now we're going to add just a slight movement to this. We're going to be pressing forward off of the toes, shifting the shoulders over the wrists a little bit more and maybe dropping the head slightly and then come back. So you're shifting forward and slightly lowering down. Take a break when you need one. Get one more. Good, let's lower knees. Once again, we're taking it back to our resting pose, whatever's comfortable for you. And let's give our shoulders just a little stretch here. Taking the right arm forward, sliding the left arm underneath for thread the needle, bringing the left shoulder towards the floor. And then just looking underneath your right arm. And let's go the other way. <clears throat> and then let's come up onto the knees. If you want to here, you can shake the arms loosely a little bit. Just kind of let everything go. Might be feeling a little tightness in the shoulders. So we're going to come onto our knees here so that the tops of our feet are on the mat. If you um, find that you get a cramp in your foot, you can also bring the toes to the mat if that feels better. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to try to keep a really straight line through the front of the body. And try to keep from pressing the hips forward or back. Just going to sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to hinge at the knees and drop everything back in a really straight plane a few inches until you can feel your core engage. I'm just going to hold and breathe here for a couple of breaths. Be feeling this in the front of your thighs as well. 
One more inhale. Good, let's come up. We're taking the hands down, pressing up into cat stretch, rounding up the back, dropping the tail, dropping the chin, pulling the belly into the back. Then we're going to try that same thing again. This time, if you want to make it a little more challenging, you can take the arms forward at shoulder height. Taking a deep inhale. And exhale, hinging it back. Trying to keep those shoulders moving down the back and away from the head. Last inhale here. Good. Exhale back. Coming up again into our cat stretch. And we're going to do that one last time. This time if you want more work, we're going to take the arms over the head. Again, shoulder blades moving down the back. Big inhale. Exhale, we're taking it back. Make sure you're breathing here. It's going to be harder if you're holding your breath. One last inhale. I'm shaking. Good. Let's take it down to child's pose. Just a little short stretch here. We're going to keep moving. Maybe one more time up into cat. And then let's come back to our seat. And we're going to be doing a rowing motion. And like with most of our exercises and poses, we can build on this to make it more challenging or back off to make it less challenging. So the start of this is something we did before. It's just a basic V-sit. And we can bring the heels to the mat, take arms forward, and then just slightly lean back until you can feel your core engaged. And like I said, if you want more work, we can take the feet up. And then we're just going to be doing some rowing motions. So if you want to even make a fist here, you can. Try to keep the face relaxed and soft. Try not to clench the jaw. And let's really use the breath here. So let's start with just a rowing motion in the arms. We're just going to pull back. That shoulder height maybe a little lower. Arms reaching forward, arms pulling back. As you do that, as you pull the arms back behind, the chest is going to move slightly forward, and as you reach the arms forward, the chest is going to move slightly back. Be sure to try to keep the lower back fairly long. If you find yourself rounding out too much there, where the shoulders are rolling forward, it can ease up on this. Now this might be enough for you. You might even need to bring your heels down for a rest. If you want to add more work, we can extend the legs when the arms extend and then bring the legs back forward. Let's try to reverse that. We're going to extend the arms, knees forward, pull the arms back as we extend the legs. more. Last one. Good. Let's come back to our V-sit. Relax the feet down. I'm just going to kind of let the hips open a little bit here. We might be feeling some tension in the hip flexors. So you can take the arms behind and just maybe do some really gentle twists here. Opening the hips and then closing back and forth.
Okay, now we're going to take it a little lower onto the mat. Okay, we're going to start with our legs up. You might not be able to get them all the way straight. That's okay. Just do your best. We'll take the arms also straight up, plugging your fingertips into the ceiling. And we're going to be doing some slight raising motions here. And we just want to think about the front of the chest, the center of the chest and the heart lifting straight up towards the ceiling or towards your toes. And try not to think about it so much as a crunch, as just a slight lift, just trying to get those shoulder blades up off the mat. And we are going to be reaching from right to left. So let's take a big inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to reach the right hand towards the outside of that left foot. Inhale back down. Exhale, lifting left hand towards the outside of the right foot. And then just find your own breath, inhaling down, exhaling up. Let's do 10 right to the center, both fingertips lifting straight up. Three more. Great job. Let's release down. Take the feet to the mat. Once again, we can just move however. Uh, your body's signaling you to do. It might want you to be bringing your knees up to your chest. You might just want to float the legs back and forth. Whatever feels good. And then we're going to roll onto our left side. Take that left arm all the way underneath your head. And then we're going to scoot the hips back so that they're lined up kind of towards the back end of the mat so that your body is in a little bit of a pike position. So again, we can rest the head on that left arm. Take the right arm in front of you for support. We're going to raise the right leg. And then we're going to try to lift that left leg up to meet it. And then we're just going to be lifting and lowering without touching the floor. And it's okay if you want to just slightly rock onto that outer left hip as you lift the legs forward. But let's think about this movement starting right in here. So don't think, it, don't think about lifting the legs or lifting the hips or from the hips. All your power is coming from that right side. Let's inhale to lower and exhale to lift. Might not be a big movement. That's okay as long as you're feeling your muscles doing the work. That's all that counts. I always want to focus on what we can do, the things that we can do, as opposed to all the things we don't think we can do. Try to keep a positive frame of mind. If you're doing something, um, that's the important thing. Doing something good for your body, something good for your mind, good for your heart. Let's do two more on this side. And then we'll take both legs down, and we're going to drop this right knee forward, that top knee, and really gently open through the side here. We're going to take the right shoulder back just a little bit, just a real slight twist here. Come up. You can switch sides. Okay. 
Again, lining up the back of your body or the center of the back of your body towards the back of the mat. Taking that left hand in front for support. First lifting the left leg, then the right. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lifting. At your own pace, with your own breath. Doing the best you can in each moment. Listening to your body. But also challenging yourself. Do three more on this side. Last one. And release both legs back down slowly. We'll take the left knee towards the front of the mat, really gently twisting that left shoulder slightly. And then let's roll onto our stomach. We're going to take the hands just beside our rib cage, as close to your body as you can. You might even be touching the hand to the side slightly. And then we want to bring the balls of the feet to the mat. Hug your rib cage with your arms so that your elbows are very low and also pointing, pointing down towards your toes. So we can use the knees here. What we're going to do is do a reverse push up from this position. So we want to bring a lot of length into our back, pressing into the toes and knees if that's your option tonight. Then we're going to begin lifting from the navel. So the belly is going to pull up away from the mat. We're going to try to press up into our high plank. Now from here we're going to lower back down as slowly as we can. Again, keep in mind you can keep the knees down, elbows close, Body straight like a board. Good. Now let's press the chest up slightly, coming into low cobra. Take the hands and just barely touch them on the mat. And then come down all the way. Just grease the mat with your forehead. And then we're going to press it back to our child's pose. Coming back up to downward facing dog. And then coming back down to the mat. Onto your seat. Once again, we're going to come up into that V-sit. Option to keep the heels down if you like. And then we're just going to be doing some gentle twists here. So on an inhale, we're going to open up the left arm, keeping the right arm reaching forward. Exhale, take it back to center. Inhale, open. Keep that chest puffed out towards your toes. Your back won't be perfectly straight, but we do turn, want to try to keep the lower back from curling too much and rounding out. Inhale, open. Exhale, come back. Inhale, open. Exhale, come back. Couple more. Good, and then we're either going to come back to our V set. If you want more work, you can widen that V and begin to straighten the legs a little bit more. Or if you want to try to balance here, we can take our first two fingers and place them between the first two toes. Keep the knees bent for now and just kind of balance on your seat here. If you want to move on with this one, we can begin to either straighten one leg, keep the other leg in. Don't worry about uh, straightening the leg all the way. 
Doesn't have to be perfect. You might just experiment with one leg and then the other to see where you're at. Maybe move on to trying both legs. Still keeping that chest lifting forward and a lot of strength and length in the back. One more inhale. We're going to release. We're going to take the bottoms of our feet together here and then come back to a reclined position. Then once again, we're going to take our arms right over our head. This is going to be our inhale position. And as we exhale, we're just going to try to lift those shoulder blades up off the mat and take the fingertips towards the toes. So that's our exhale. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, lifting and reaching. Now we can take this one step further if you want to, or you can stay just like this. You can take the legs up in a wide V. And same thing. This is our inhale. Exhale coming through the legs, reaching the fingertips toward the end of your mat. And if you can, try to curl your tailbone up just slightly up off the mat. So at the same time that you're lifting forward, you're also slightly crunching through the lower abdominals. Just slightly lifting the tail up. Almost done. Last one. We're going to hold this. Again, if you need to uh, relax the feet back down like we had them earlier, that's fine. Just holding and breathing. Good. Let's release the legs, taking the knees back together towards your chest. And we're just going to do some small twists here. Making circles with the knees. Nice little lower back massage. And then let's let the left leg come all the way down to the mat. We'll gently pull the right knee in. Hands behind the thigh. And let's relax the right leg down. Now taking the left leg in. Same thing, other side. And we'll place that left foot just outside the edge of the mat. And then we're going to lower the knee towards the center of the body. Nice little stretch for our upper uh, quads and the hip flexor. Maybe even a slight stretch through the abdominals depending on how deep you move in this. Be careful of the knee here. If you're feeling any tenderness in the knee, we might want to ease up on this one. And let's take the left leg down, bringing that right foot back up just to the outside of the mat so you can lower your right knee. And then we're going to bring both knees back to the chest, engaging the core so that the low back is moving towards the mat. And we're going to begin to rock. As we begin to rock, we're going to lift the shoulder blades up, rounding the spine, 
You can do this uh, a few more times here if that feels good, or you can just come back to a seated position. And then let's take the legs into a comfortable cross position, or if that's not comfortable for you, um, find a comfortable seated position. And we're just going to do a real gentle um, side bend, maybe a little twisting. Let's take the right hand down beside you. And we're going to inhale and lift the left fingertips up, opening that left side. You can take that right hand out a little further if you like, bend the right elbow. Let's take it to the other side. And then let's take our right hand toward that left knee. Left hand behind your seat. And let's take a really long lifting inhale to gently twist the spine while keeping both sit bones um, firmly rooted into the mat. So. We're feeling light through the torso, just a real easy twist here. And let's take it to the other side. And that's it, about a 35 minute practice. Um, hopefully you'll be able to um, join us again for another yoga video. I might try to do another more fitness um, style video this weekend. I did do the high rep, high intensity body weight workout. That one is still available. I encourage you to try that um, if you want something new and exciting. So again, thanks for joining me. Have a great evening.